Hello and welcome to another session of Cardiac Imaging Agora. As you notice on the screen, we have our new logo right now. And thanks to the uh, cardiology graphics department at Cleveland Clinic uh, in the medical illustration for creating this uh, for us. Uh, thank you, ladies. In this session, we will discuss cardiac PET in the presence of left ponder branch block. First, again, we go to the standard uh, steps we use for reviewing all the uh, uh, cardiac standard cardiac perfusion images we do, whether they are SPECT or uh, PET, uh, starting with the transmission emission images, if you have CT attenuation correction, and moving down through uh, all these steps uh, to generate a clinically meaningful report. This time, I'm going to give you a little bit of the history about this patient uh, before we uh, embark on reading the uh, exam. This is a 61-year-old female with a history of CAD. Uh, it seems it was non-obstructive. Nothing was done on it in the past. She has no prior revascularization. She's on aspirin, beta blockers, ARBs, statins, and spironolactone. She has some episodes of complete heart block in the past at an outside facility for which she had a dual chamber pacemaker inserted two years earlier. When she presented to us, she presented after she had a SPECT scan showing an abnormality and a drop in ejection fraction with a new left ponder branch block. This is her old EKG in 2017 on the left, and this is her current EKG on the right showing the left ponder branch block with normal, um, otherwise normal PR uh, interval. Obviously, she was not using her pacemaker on this uh, EKG. Uh, however, they reported at uh, certain points she was getting occasional pacing, and this is an EKG where she was getting uh, A sensing and B pacing, as you can see uh, nicely illustrated here. She had an echocardiogram before she presented to us. This is her echocardiogram uh, uh, performed uh, uh, before she presented to the nuclear lab at our uh, echo lab upstairs. Uh, Again, you can see global left ventricular dysfunction, significant uh, uh, reduction in ejection fraction, left ventricular dilatation, uh, dyssynchrony here uh, with uh, global reduction in uh, longitudinal strain in all uh, segments. And you can see here her ejection fraction was calculated by uh, 3D echo at 14.4% uh, with very dilated ventricle and end systolic and end diastolic uh, uh, volumes being uh, very large. We start with the nuclear uh, images. She came to our uh, PET lab, referred by one of our uh, one of my colleagues, uh, to assess uh, the presence of uh, ischemia after uh, the SPECT, which I will share with you later uh, towards the end of the session. So again, this uh, is rest and stress uh, transmission and emission images. Again, the purpose of these images is to ensure the proper co-registration of the perfusion images with the CT images. Again, here we have good registration both on the rest images on the left and the stress images on the, on the right. The next step is to make sure we adjust the reconstruction planes to make sure when we generate the uh, uh, perfusion images to analyze that we were properly over the heart and all the images were aligned. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can see here the uh, uh, perfusion images, the static images, and the right-hand side, you can see the gated images uh, all uh, after alignment and uh, selection of the area of interest here with the uh, selection uh, circle here around the heart. Then we move to the standard review of the rest and uh, stress images. Uh, these are reconstructed images, rest images on the bottom in the standard fashion and stress images on the top. And what you can see here, GI activity, again, not uh, an unusual finding in patients uh, undergoing rubidium uh, pharmacological uh, stress testing. And you can start with a short axis review here. We have a very minor defect towards the LB apex here in rest images, probably not as clear elsewhere. And again, uh, you can see a dilated left ventricle, uh, minimal defect in the septum here that goes away with stress. Nothing really uh, uh, crazy to go or to uh, report as far as fixed or uh, reversible defect, meaning no ischemia and no, no uh, evidence of scarred myocardium with almost normal images as far as perfusion and the rest images, uh, besides the fact that the left ventricle appears dilated uh, and uh, globular rather than its normal shape. Then we go to the 17-segment uh, model. Uh, rest images are here. You can see those defects we appreciate with our naked eye. 
before some mild defects all over the inferior wall, inferior septum, anterior septum, prebasal, anterior wall, and all these defects uh, defects are almost gone in the stress uh, images. So this is uh, what we used to call traditionally the era of thallium reversal distribution, but with PET, uh, we, we do not describe that. We describe these images as normal perfusion and stress images uh, as seen before. So now we go to the um, analysis of the histogram for the gated images. Rest is on the left and stress is on the right. And you can see here the heart rate was 70 at rest uh, with a very good histogram here. Uh, heart rate 87 with stress with some uh, uh, variability, but uh, still a good histogram. If you had the patient paced during rest or stress, you will see just a sharp one line in the histogram with nothing else because the heart rate is expected to be always the same. In this instance, seems to be physiologic conduction and not paste. These are important to review because you can have variability in these patients who are paced between when you started the stress test and when you injected, injected the regadenosin uh, with, uh, you know, it can start with being paced and end up being physiologic conduction or vice versa. So it's important to review these uh, images. Then we we'll go to the gated images. Again, this is a very bad ventricle. Ejection fraction is uh, it's quite reduced. Uh, very dilated ventricle, as you can see here, with an ejection fraction in the range of 20%. Again, the right ventricle here is, uh, is dilated with a bit down. It's not uh, severely reduced, but uh, uh, again, it, uh, there is bioventricular dysfunction, more prominent left ventricular than right ventricular dysfunction here. Then we'll move to the dyssynchrony analysis. I kept on top here an, a, a, an example of a normal dyssynchrony or normal synchrony in a patient with normal heart rest and stress, you can see all the segments of the myocardium coming down together, and the rest images and the stress images, normal contractility, normal and synchronous contractility. Whereas when you move to our patient right here, you can see all the segments are contracting at that haphazard time uh, in the rest and stress images with no evidence of significant contractility of the myocardium here. Uh, and the dyssynchrony polar map here shows you the septum probably being the worst as far as uh, dyssynchrony compared to the other segments not an unexpected finding in patients with left bundle branch block. We did not do floor ratios on this patient because uh, in patients, again, as we said before in other sessions, if the ejection fraction is uh, reduced uh, below 40% standard in our lab, we do not report flow because of the, uh, this, uh, this uh, flow reserve and the resting flows have not been really studied in this uh, kind of population uh, to our satisfaction to report it clinically. Then we go to the CT images. You can see the pacemaker here in the right atrium. Uh, nothing in the lungs. We review this to ensure there is no uh, evidence of uh, coronary calcification to report or uh, uh, lung or mediastinal uh, non-cardiac findings to, uh, to report that can be important clinically. Then we go to generate the clinically meaningful report. So this is the indication for this test was a presyncope with heart failure. Again, this is the test we did, rapid denison arrest and stress uh, uh, PET uh, images. Uh, this is the dose we gave. This is the radiation uh, we exposed the patient to. DLP is 46, rest and stress uh, 30, uh, our standard dose for rubidium in our lab. Uh, again, we filled, uh, we filled the form here uh, to indicate what's going on with this patient. I gave you this before, so I did not uh, spend the time filling the form, but here's, her, uh, here's our finding. This is a lady with uh, uh, heart failure, uh, a new left bundle branch block, and uh, she's on uh, adequate medical uh, therapy. We move to, uh, again, report the ejection fraction and the uh, wall motions. Again, we septum was worse than the rest of the ventricles, so we coded it that way. We call this ejection fraction is severely uh, reduced with severely dilated left ventricle. And again, when we talked about the RV, we noticed the RV was not contracting well, so we reported that too. And again, here are your volumes uh, that we report. It's important to report the volumes. They, in our experience and in, uh, in small series, they correlate very well with what you get with the, what considered the gold standard by MRI. Uh, these volumes by PET are extremely uh, close to what you get by MRI again. And uh, we feel that it's important to report them. Uh, a lot of uh, prognostic uh, data can be derived from end systolic volume index uh, uh, if you're doing uh, clinical follow-up on these patients or you're glad to do any uh, prospective or retrospective studies on, on your database. This is beyond, uh, of course, beyond perfusion abnormalities and beyond the uh, ejection fraction. Then we have to fill here what's going on with this patient as far as how we called it. 
We call it as normal perfusion, but abnormal ejection fraction. Again, we relied on the stress images here uh, to show us that the perfusion was normal, but the ejection fraction was abnormal. So we have these fields for the results, normal, abnormal, normal perfusion, but abnormal EF and non-diagnostic. Again, we tried to keep the non-diagnostic below uh, 5%. Uh, we've been successful at doing that, and we, um, we are lucky because we have CT attenuation correction for all our spectrums and PET. Uh, but that's a field we created because uh, we did not rely, rely on the perfusion alone. We want to uh, have the EF contribute to the uh, report, and that's why we call it uh, normal perfusion but abnormal ejection fraction. And finally, we generate the report. That's how it looks like. Again, all this stuff we talked about earlier is, uh, is seen here. We did not see any coronary calcification. We didn't have a prior uh, uh, PET to compare to. Now, this is a spec that was done on the patient. I promised you earlier, I'll show you this uh, two weeks earlier. Uh, this shows you the poor quality of a spec images in patients with left bundle branch block. And this was done pharmacological spec, so this is not exercise spec. So the idea of switching the patient to pharmacological stress uh, to avoid these septal defect, uh, at least in this patient, in our experience, it does not work all the time, especially with adenosine when you end up having a rise in heart rate anywhere between uh, 10 to 20 uh, points. Uh, so uh, again, you can see here is, uh, you have defects, Apache defects almost everywhere, anterior wall here, uh, apex, uh, inferior septum, and then these, all these defects get worse with, uh, with stress. So you're in a bind when you're reading this kind of study to call ischemia or peri-infract ischemia in the left anterior descending artery. Uh, it's a, this is a struggle. I, I don't care how experienced you are in reading these specs. This is a very difficult study to read as uh, left bundle branch block related uh, 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 defects. Uh, this is the spec uh, with AC. This is the spec was done with AC. This is the PET that was done uh, at our center. And again, you can see the quality of the image is totally different. And again, you can avoid all these artifacts by, uh, by doing the PET. So this is not uh, theory. This is a paper we published uh, last year, about 100 and, uh, over 100 patients at our center who were sent uh, with left bundle branch lock who were sent for PET. And we did not notice uh, any time when the PET actually showed this uh, left bundle branch block related artifact uh, in, uh, uh, that, we, that is common with SPECT. And in the instances where we saw defects uh, in the presence of left bundle branch block on PET, uh, those defects almost always resulted in, uh, uh, in true severe obstructive coronary disease. So the specificity of the findings on PET uh, in patients with left bundle branch block is extremely uh, high. So uh, we have actually switched our practice here based on our clinical observation, daily observation, and based on this, uh, on this uh, paper uh, to now uh, mostly our patients with left bundle branch block. If, we, uh, if we're gonna do pharmacological stress testing, uh, we switch them uh, almost always to PET to avoid this defect. And we've been very successful at that uh, with another probably couple of hundred patients since uh, since this experience was uh, published. Again, the, uh, uh, this uh, uh, video, the purpose of this is to take some um, messages home, uh, to teach you how to evaluate perfusion images in the setting of left bundle branch block, appreciate uh, heart rate uh, uh, and uh, at rest and post stress, and make sure that you uh, uh, evaluate these patients to have pacemakers and look at the histograms because things can change from rest to stress and make your life difficult with the ejection fraction, with perfusion defects, and so on and so forth. Appreciate the volumes and the absence of left bundle branch block defects on PET images. You can see actually, if we go back here to the uh, SPECT images, the volumes here were not impressive, and that's due to the poor spatial resolution of SPECT, which can uh, result in smaller volumes, especially in, in, in females and higher ejection fraction than we, uh, we saw. Um, again, this is very important uh, prognostic indicator, in my opinion, to assess the volumes when we're doing these images, specifically with PET. Again, the high specificity for PET, even in the presence of conduction abnormalities, and try to inter uh, integrate all these findings uh, and look at the old images, look at the echoes, look at the EKGs, uh, look at what other uh, devices the patient have, before you generate a clinically uh, meaningful report and message to the referring physician. Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for joining us for another session of uh, cardiac imaging uh, Agora.